Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about damage or lesions to motor neurons. So remember, you've got two motor neurons. You've got an upper motor neuron, which is coming from the motor cortex, mapped to a particular part of the body that you wanna move. This upper motor neuron travels from the cortex to the brainstem, crosses over at the medulla, or medulla oblongata, continues down the spinal cord, and then synapses or speaks to the second motor neuron called the lower motor neuron, which exits at the level in which it needs to innovate or speak to the target muscle. Here, we've got the quadricep of the leg. Now, if we've got damage to the spinal cord, to specific motor neurons, now it may be upper or lower, what you're gonna find is that they present differently. So let's first demonstrate what would happen if there's damage to the lower motor neuron. So I'm, there's gonna be a level of injury here that's damaged, okay? Right here. Now what we're gonna find, the lower motor neuron, lower motor neuron. Now I want you to think about this. The upper motor neuron is intact. The lower motor neuron is not. The lower motor neuron speaks to the muscle to tell it to contract. It releases chemicals. It releases neurotransmitters like acetylcholine, tells that muscle to contract. It releases growth factors, things that tell that muscle to maintain its size and maintain its strength. With this lower motor neuron gone, what we're gonna find is that the size or mass of this muscle that's innervated by the lower motor neuron significantly diminishes. The strength or power of that muscle that's innervated by that lower motor neuron significantly diminishes. And what about if you were to do a reflex? So what I've got here is a sensory neuron that if I were to hit below the kneecap, so the patella tendon with a little hammer, it pulls on the patella and stretches the tendon and stre stretches the quadricep. This sensory receptor picks up this stretch and usually, when there's no damage, goes into the spinal cord, stimulates the lower motor neuron, that comes out and tells the muscle to contract. So, muscle stretches into the spinal cord, comes back out, muscle contracts. That's a reflex. Without the lower motor neuron, there's gonna be no reflex. So, you get hyporeflexia. Hyporeflexia. Now, in addition to that, this muscle that's going to be, that's usually innervated by this lower motor neuron, it's not going to contract. So you're going to have hypo, so remember hypo means under or reduced, hypotonia, also known as flaccidity. So the muscle will be flaccid, flaccidity. So that's a lower motor neuron lesion. Let's just say the lower motor neuron is intact. So let's draw this up again. Lower motor neuron is intact, right there. The reflex is intact, but we've got a, an upper motor neuron injury. So here, at the spinal cord. What does this mean? All right, there's lower motor neuron. Let's do upper motor neuron. Well, the lower is intact. So what that means is there's still gonna be chemicals released by the lower motor neuron. There's still gonna be those growth factors. So, the muscle's not gonna be used, but the muscle mass or the size of the muscle, it will diminish, this is called atrophy, but not as much as a lower motor neuron because the lower motor neuron's intact and it's releasing those growth factors. So you've got loss in mass, but it's not as significant compared to that of a lower motor neuron injury. The power is reduced, but not as much as a lower motor neuron injury. What about the reflexes? I hit the patella tendon, stretches the quadricep, sends the sensory information in, stimulates the lower motor neuron because it's intact and the reflex occurs. But remember I told you that the upper motor neuron plays a very important role in inhibiting the lower motor neuron. It modulates it. But with this upper motor neuron no longer present or no longer working properly, you can't inhibit it. So this reflex works in overdrive. So you get hyperreflexia an exaggerated reflex, hyperreflexia. Now, again, because there's no inhibition here, what happens is this neuron is going unchecked and this muscle becomes hypertonic. This is also known as spasticity, hypertonic. Again, also known as spasticity. All right, let's then put this into practice. Right? Let's put this into practice. We've got 
the upper motor neuron and we've got the lower motor neuron. Now what's happening here? Let's just say we want to send a signal from the part of the cortex map for the hand down to the arm, right? So we're going to have upper motor neuron for the hand coming down, goes down, crosses to the other side, moves down, it synapses with the lower motor neuron and then that moves out to the hand to tell the hand to move. Now, let's just say there's a spinal cord injury at this particular level, so of the neck, the cervical area. So there's damage here. What can you see has happened? If there's damage at the cervical level, it's damaging the lower motor neuron for the arm or hand, but it's damaging the upper motor neuron for the leg. So the types of ways it manifests is, at least for the arms, it's a lower motor neuron injury. Loss of mass, loss of power, hyporeflexia, so no reflexes. The muscle is flaccid, it's not contracting. But for the lower motor, for the leg, it's the upper motor neuron that's affected. And so what you get is less loss of mass, less loss of power, hyperreflexia, and hypertonicity and spasticity of that leg. So this is upper versus lower motor neuron injury.